Hey guys, happy Friday. Hope you're having a good week. I certainly am. My portfolio has finally surpassed all-time highs and it feels pretty good. Thank you to Rocket Lab and Tesla. Today I figured it would be interesting to investigate something that I've been meaning to look into for a long time and that is uh, the bear claim or the bear thesis that without neutron spend, Rocket Lab is still very unprofitable. And I really wish I could find it. I went looking for it to make this video because I do remember there was a prominent Reddit post a while back going over in detail and by the numbers why the poster said there was no way they were profitable without the neutron spending. So if you take off neutron spend and forget about neutron, uh, no way the rest of the business was currently profitable. Unfortunately, I couldn't find that post, so let me know if you know where it is. But anyway, the reason I'm doing this now is because Peter Beck reiterated in a recent interview that yes, Rocket Lab is a profitable business if you take out all their spending on Neutron and investing in that project. So I wanted to go over the numbers and just kind of confirm for myself, does this make sense? Is Rocket Lab profitable if the worst should happen and they were really tight for cash? Could they kind of slow down or almost grind to a halt Neutron development and be profitable just as they are now? Uh, let's take a look at those numbers today and see what we can find out. Before we dive into that, I hope you will consider subscribing if you haven't already and you do like the channel. If you're already a subscriber, I will check out your comments down below. Thank you so much for your subscription. Okay, with that out of the way, let's dive into Rocket Lab's profitability. Hopping over to Google Sheets, we have some charts here to get us started off. What we're going through now, looking at Rocket Lab's expenses by the quarter since they came public back in September 2021 is their R&D expenses, as well as their capital expenditure, which is basically when you're purchasing equipment, facilities, properties, and that kind of thing. And then we have their selling general and admin expenses, which is exactly what it sounds like. So uh, those three lines are the majority of their spending when you're not talking about cost of goods sold. And this is where mostly Neutron will fall into. Now, mostly it's going to be the top two, which is research and development, and then CapEx as they, you know, buy and build out their factories and equipment to build the Neutron and obviously invest in the property, building out launch infrastructure and all that stuff. A lot of that stuff is capital expenditure because those are assets that they will own going forward and not just money that's being burned. Maybe there'd be a little bit of selling general and admin, mostly on the admin side, people working on the Neutron program, but it's going to be pretty small. So for our intents and purposes, we're going to just say everything is R&D and CapEx. And we just uh, getting a sense of how this has grown as Neutron has really ramped into gear over the past couple years. In 2022, we were looking at maybe $10 million in R&D expenses. Right now, we're at about $40 million in R&D expenses per quarter. Uh, similarly, CapEx, you know, a lot lumpier is when they buy new equipment and new property, they can have large one-time purchases, but it has kind of trended upwards as well over the past couple years. So that's a bit of context to get us started off and in the right ballpark. And we also have a recording here from Adam Spice at a relatively recent conference where he was asked about neutron spending and how that breaks down. Let's listen to what he said right now. So, so Neutron is consuming said, about $40 million right a quarter now. between R&D, uh, which is large. Yeah, kind of, if you look at R&D spend for Neutron, it's half prototyping, half uh, direct you know, labor. Um, and then about $20 million or half of the total cash flow related program is related to CapEx spend. So you're going to see that continue through the remainder of 2024. Uh, but as we get toward that first launch, that's going to start to taper off. Uh, you know, we budgeted the program initially at, at $250 to $300 million. And right now, given those, we were coming in the, you know, a little bit underneath that until we pushed the program a couple quarters. Now we're bumping up against that higher limit of $300 million across R&D and CapEx. Okay, so pretty clear. We're looking at about a $40 million spend on Neutron, at least you know this past quarter. I think that recording is a little bit older. And uh, we're looking at about half in R&D and half in capital expenditure. So that gives us some really good numbers to work with here as we break down the profitability. Let's head over to the numbers now. And basically, 
When I was estimating Rocket Lab's neutron spend, taking all that data from what Adam said and from you know the trend lines in those previous charts, I came out to something like this. Uh, now, obviously, I will never be exactly right. Hopefully, I'm just kind of in the right ballpark. But if we accept what they've said, they're on track for about 300 million in spending to get the first launch off or get the first rocket to the pad, I guess is the phrasing they use. And you accept that they're on track for Q2 2025, then if we're at 40 million spending per quarter right now, maybe it continues to go up a little bit and we get to more like 42 or even higher as we talk to Q2. 2025. Um, this is kind of what I came out with. Obviously, it has to be a very steep rise because you can't just be 40 all the way through or we'll b blow way past a $300 million budget. Um, plus, early on when they're doing designs, I think that's mostly on computers and stuff like that and in software. So the spend is much less than as you get further on and they're actually buying the equipment, buying new factories, building out and all that kind of thing. So this is kind of the neutron spend chart that I have come out with as just a rough S uh, now. And by the way, a lot of this was powered by FinChat. As you saw in a bunch of these charts, we have powered by FinChat here. Uh, very easy tool, basically powered by AI, focusing on investing data in companies. You can just ask it in real world language what you want. So for this chart, I just asked, show me Rocket Labs R&D expenses since going public and bam, there we have it. There is a referral link to FinChat if you're interested in checking that out down in the description below. And of course, it helps out the channel if you do end up using it and like the product. Okay, so now down to the profitability line. We have all these numbers here for each quarterly result broken down. We don't really need to worry about the breakdown between launch systems, launch services and space systems or total revenue. We also have CapEx and R&D here because we already have EBITDA, net income, and free cash flow. So these are different types of profitability metrics people often use. Net income, the most common one you think of classically for profitability, but EBITDA is earnings before interest depreciation and amortization. So you're taking out, say, depreciation of equipment and factories, maybe dropping in value, but it's not impacting the cash on your books. So it's a little bit less of a concern, might better reflect, you know, the flows of cash into and out of your balance sheet. Similarly, free, free cash flow as well is another common metric people use. So what I'm doing here, very simple. We have our estimates for how much they are spending on Neutron each quarter. You may disagree with them. You may want to put in your own numbers, really just trying to get in the right ballpark here. Uh, that is what we have, 42, 40, 40, 40, 36. Um, and then we just add it back in and see what the difference is. So EBITDA for the most recent quarter, Q2 2024, was negative 35 million. Add 42, that means you have a positive 6.83 6 million dollar EBITDA figure. Net income is a little tighter. It's barely profitable but it is profitable and free cash flow of course best of all is looking at positive 13 million dollars in free cash flow so the interesting thing here is there's a lot more gray area than you might think i think when the original reddit post came out breaking down why the person said they were not cash flow positive or Profitable is the term. I think they use profitable without the neutron spend. He's probably looking at net income. And, you know, on that metric, I guess he's not wrong, right? Because net income was still negative, say, you know, Q1 2023 or something like that, whenever he made his post. However, uh, if you look at free cash flow, quickly turns positive. And I don't really think. Uh, management is being disingenuous saying like it's a nice little business without Neutron because when you have positive free cash flow, positive EBITDA, 
Um, you're not really in much trouble, right? Like the balance sheet is not getting drawn down. The cash on the books is not really getting drawn down that much. Even if you do have, say, uh, stock-based compensation, which isn't in there in terms of, you know, a little bit of dilution to shareholders. Again, that is real, but it doesn't affect the cash on the books and how close the company is to going out of business. Similarly, you know, depreciation on machines, equipment, property uh, doesn't really matter in terms of, you know, the cash on the books drying up, but it just, looking at these different numbers gives you uh, a picture, a different type of picture how profitable the company would be without the neutron spend so i think it's pretty fair what the management said they are a nice little business without neutron there would be no worries about any sort of uh, going out of business issue especially with the massive amount of cash on their bank on their balance sheet of course should they stop neutron spend absolutely not they've come so far in the program they've done so much and obviously once this program comes online not only will it be a big revenue driver in its own right but it will also unlock the even bigger revenue driver or opportunity which is the space applications business the one we're all really excited for that to get into without the keys to space you can't really put your own satellites up there and operate them that's the last leg of the stool the three different legs they need in order to successfully build launch and operate their own constellation they just need to be able to launch it and neut and electrons not big enough so they need neutron for that once they have that final leg of that rocket online then it should be ready for liftoff if you don't mind the little pun I have there. <laughs> As always, let me know what you think of these numbers, what you would have changed, because I'm sure you guys would have changed something and everyone has a little bit different opinion, but I think uh, the most important thing is seeing how it's a little more gray than black and white in terms of profitability versus risks of going out of business. And you, some people talk about EBITDA, some people talk about free cash flow, and some of course talk about net income. But right now, as of this most recent quarter, all three metrics, by my math, were positive, albeit net income was slightly, very barely positive without that neutron spend, with the neutron spend backed out, that is. So I hope this gives you a little better of an idea into the state of the business minus neutron. Let me know how you're feeling about the company's progress down below. I hope you guys have a great day and a great rest of the week. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.